Man, I don't even know what I want to call this video if I'm going to be honest. But what I do know is what exactly I want to talk about. So, it's approaching the three year anniversary of one of the favorite videos that I've made on this YouTube channel ever since coming back from the Philippines in 2017 and turning my channel from a gaming channel into a full time hockey discussion news channel. And that video I made three years ago. It's actually two on the thumbnail, but it's December 31st, 2017, so it's almost three. That was a video talking about the Vancouver Canucks and Rasmus Dahlin, asking the question what would happen if the Vancouver Canucks selected the Super Swede at the 2018 NHL Entry Draft. Now, this was a very hot topic amongst Canucks fans, because the Canucks were in a position where, at that time, they were still a pretty bad team. Like, they weren't really all too great, they were the second worst team in the 2016-17 NHL season, and they dropped from second to fifth in the draft, because of course they did. Colorado dropped from first to fourth, Vancouver dropped from second to fifth, and then you have Dallas. Dallas, Philadelphia, and New Jersey, who all ended up winning because, of course, that makes sense. But the next year's worth of play had a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans super excited because the Canucks were not a great team in 2017-2018. And sitting at the top of that 2018 NHL entry draft was a number one defender, a super Swede in the making, the great Rasmus Dahlin. And a lot of Canucks fans back at this time were saying things like, okay, the Canucks are a bad team this year, and the Canucks have never drafted first overall in the NHL entry draft ever. We've had second overall a few times, third overall I think once, maybe a few more times, I'm not too sure, but never first. I know we held on to the first overall pick back in 1999, but we didn't use it. So, now with the Vancouver Canucks and the way that they've been going, the fact that there's this Elias Pettersson guy who is absolutely tearing up Sweden at the moment, it makes the most sense in the world for the Vancouver Canucks to draft first overall take Rasmus Dahlin and unlock the next step into their rebuilding franchise. Because you know Ole Olevi is not going to be that number one D-man. You know that's the only part that they need to fix. We spoke about it in that video three years ago, but my perspective back then was, okay, let's go back to the future a little bit. Imagine it's 2024. I'm going to ask you this. Do the Canucks have a number one center in the league? Yeah, they have Elias Pettersson. I'm going to ask you, do they have a number one winger in the league? And you're going to say, yeah, you know, they have Brock Besser. And remember, back then, Besser was like an Austin Matthews, Patrick Line caliber in terms of the point production. This guy was tearing the roof off the house. Goals everywhere, left and right. The guy just absolutely couldn't stop scoring until he ended up going back first into the boards. But like, you know, it was great while it lasted. I'm going to ask you if the Canucks in 2025 have a number one goalie in the league. You're going to say, yeah, it's Thatcher Demko, but if it's not Demko, they have DiPietro. The likelihood of both of these guys busting, it's quite low in my opinion. Defense is the only place the Canucks need improvement, which is why it only makes sense for Rasmus Dahlin to be fixed in as that number one into the long-term future and ultimately put everything back where it needs to be. And so I, like many other Canucks fans I saw on Twitter, was hyping myself up for the idea of Rasmus Dahlin. I was low-key on the tank for Dahlin train. Like, I know the Canucks weren't really all too good back in 2017-2018, but the best games to me were the games where Besser got two goals, but the Canucks still ended up losing. Because that fulfilled everything I wanted for that team. Besser points to win the Calder, and the Canucks getting lower down there in the standings, upping their Rasmus Dahlin chances. And you know what happens next, because we didn't end up winning. Yeah, Buffalo ended up winning the draft lottery. Surprise, surprise, a bad team that probably did deserve Rasmus Dahlin too. It's just kind of funny because, you know, they already had Reinhardt second overall, then they had Eichel second overall, and then they had Dahlin first overall. You know, it was kind of, yeah, it's a lot of luck going on to some of these other teams. The expansion bros, I guess you could say, for the Buffalo Sabres compared to the Vancouver Canucks. But back then, I was like, okay... We're drafting 7th overall, and my own philosophy at the time was the fact that the Canucks would get at least somebody that I would want. Because my top 7, when it came to my personal picks, who I wanted the Vancouver Canucks to take, it went in this order. Darlene Svechnikov-Zadina, 
Hughes, Bogfist, Wallstrom, Kachuk. And in that order, from 1 to 7, I was saying it the entire time, okay, mathematically, one of these guys is going to be available when the Canucks pick at 7. Whoever that guy is, I want him. I want that guy. And if you're looking for the actual projections, I predicted the Vancouver Canucks to take Oliver Wallstrom 7th overall, because to me, Wallstrom was a Besser-like sniper who could absolutely just do things with the puck. He was tearing things up with Farabee at the US NTTP with Jack Hughes, I think, as well. So I was on the hype train for Wallstrom the entire time, but I still thought that there were other players that I wanted for the Vancouver Canucks too, specifically Quinn Hughes and Adam Bogfest. Because before the draft actually started in 2018, we saw a few other draft rankings and a few other prospect discussions that kind of devalued Hughes and Bogfest a little bit. Because at the end of the day, these guys were both sub-5, I believe 5'10 defensemen at the time, who were nimble, quick, shifty, they weren't really big on the physicality, they were really big on the mobility and the speed. And they both had huge offensive flares that you didn't really see out of what most people would traditionally think of an NHL defender. It's just, for Quinn Hughes, I was the guy who said, okay, he's probably going to go 6th overall to Detroit. I said Adam Bogfist was going to go to Ottawa because Eric Carlson was likely on his way out, and they wanted another top Swedish D-man to take his place. Which, in my mind, was probably a pretty fair justification. But, I still made videos talking about why I wanted Bogfist and our Hughes for the Vancouver Canucks. Don't get me wrong, though. Despite the fact that we made these videos, the goal in my mind, before the draft lottery at least, was always Rasmus Dahlin. I was always like, you know, Rasmus Dahlin's gonna be the number one, Rasmus Dahlin's gonna be the best undisputed defenseman, and if there's anybody that's gonna accelerate this rebuild, it's gonna be him and Pedersen playing side by side on the power play. So when the Canadians took Jesperi Kotkaniemi, third overall, and the Arizona Coyotes selected Barrett Hayden, fifth overall, Leaving Philip Zadina and Quinn Hughes, my third and fourth ranked prospects at the draft, both available at six and seven, I was absolutely ecstatic, man. Detroit ended up taking Zadina, which was not a surprise to me because, hey, if he was there at six, it seemed like the very obvious choice to make. But after Zadina went six, I remember kind of panicking with everybody on Twitter because everybody was like, yo, Benning, Bogfist and Hughes, Bogfist and Hughes, these two dynamic offensive defensemen are both available, please don't go with Noah Dobson. And that's no shade to Noah Dobson. He's a safe, very reliable, very strong defender. But I was swinging on upside in my head. I was like, you know, we want Hughes. Give me Hughes. Give me the best skater of the NHL draft. Give me the guy with the best mobility out of everybody. The guy who was able to keep up with Connor McDavid at the World Championships despite being an undrafted player. Give me that guy. And Jim Benning went over. He selected Hughes. And you remember my reaction afterwards. Yes! Yes! We did it! We got Hughes! Yes! Yes, yes! Oh my god, yes! The Vancouver Canucks have selected Quinn Hughes! Yes! No Dobson, no Bouchard, we got Quinn Hughes! Yeah, I was pretty happy. But, I will say, it's kind of funny because everything that I wanted out of Erasmus Dahlin has kind of been fulfilled by Quinn Hughes. And even more so, to the point. I said that Rasmus Dahlin would quickly establish himself as a number one defender, and all of a sudden be a quarterback on the power play, do this, do that, do all this stuff. But it's kind of funny because Quinn Hughes did everything, and it's like, you know, he's kind of getting better too. Quinn Hughes is going to come out here, and I'm expecting the world out of this guy in 2020, 2021. That's not to discredit Rasmus Dahlin. Dahlin's a very good player himself. I still want to make another video going over Rasmus Dahlin and what exactly he can do in the upcoming years, but I'm not going to lie. What we have here with Quinn Hughes is the best case scenario. What we have with Hughes is literally everything I wanted out of a Rasmus Dahlin three years ago when I was making that Dahlin to the Canucks video. And even though we dropped to seven, you could make a very big debate that the Vancouver Canucks took a top two caliber player, arguably the top player of that draft, two years removed at least, at seventh overall. 
So talk to me in the comments about this very weird topic. I know I'm kind of getting a little bit existential with these Vancouver Canucks topics because when it comes to the Canucks, you know, I can just talk about anything relating to this team because I love it so much and I've been covering them for so long that... You know, something like this where I'm just revisiting my old opinions, it definitely does put a smile on my face to at least think about it. And with that, I'm going to snap out of here. Half the universe go bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below what you think. Social that is 9 and 9. And bye.